the 2022 Lexus NX has just been leaked. Let's get into it. So I got some emails in the early morning, like 1, 2, 3 a.m. from followers around the world because obviously I was sleeping, but I woke up this morning to these emails from my international followers. Apparently Lexus let slip a video. I think it was on their YouTube page. Someone captured it and not only got the video, but we're able to get a lot of information from this new NX. So let's watch the video together and I'll pause at certain points and uh, we're just gonna dive into it, break it apart, see what's new. Uh, this is, I've never heard of this, uh, Tazuna interior concept. That's new to me. New platform, this will be the TNGAK platform shared with the Lexus ES, gosh, the Highlander, the Venza, pretty much the Venza, as we'll see here in a little bit, it shares a lot with the Venza. New multimedia safety features, Lexus driving signature, which was coined with the new IS, and there are also a lot of IS design cues on this new NX. And here's a new grill. And you can see it's vertical teardrop. It looks like we have a dark bezel. It doesn't look like a normal chrome around uh, the spindle grill. And if you look at the spindle grill corners, it's really been tightened um, to the very top. So usually you'd have more of a traditional bow tie, but it's really been tightened and cropped to the top here. Tail lights. This tail light design is almost identical to the current NX, but we have this bar that sweeps across very similar to the IS and the UX. Okay, mirrors, no big deal. Window, this is the same sort of window line we have on the current NX. There's no doubt you would mistake this for any other Lexus vehicle based off of this window design. All right, so the headlights here, what is going on? This is brand new for the NX and for Lexus for that matter. So on the old NX, we had a check mark daytime running lights that were separate from the headlight enclosure, I guess. So now we have the trippies. So not only are they trippies, they're accompanied by another large light here. So I guess, are they trippies anymore? <laughs> they're more like quad beam LEDs. But yeah, these are your nighttime lights. This check mark is your daytime running light. And there it turns on, nicely illuminated. And then all the, the nighttime lights turned on as well. Even the A pillar looks very similar to the current NX. Uh, and then we have the, of course, the sweeping rear LED bar. A better look at the grill. And yeah, kind of fake exhaust, which the current NX hybrid already has fake exhaust. So nothing really is a surprise there. So here is our first image of the full body, at least from this quarter angle. These wheels almost look like F-Sport wheels, but no F-Sport badging, no F-Sport grill here. And I hope we get this full length grill that other countries have been getting, but they cropped it on the United States version of the NX for cafe reasons. So they could market it as like a light truck because of the approach angles. There's something silly like that. That's why our NX here is uglier than it is globally. But anyways, this is a really strong looking hood, very muscular. You can see even in the back here, uh, very similar to the IS. But the hood reminds me a lot of like a little bit more strong version of the Lexus UX, which is a good thing. Can't wait to see what the NX F Sport will look like. And there's a better look of the taillights. I don't know what to think of it quite yet. I would like to see them at nighttime. Uh, and then if you look down here, it says NX200. And I believe this is a German license plate here. We're not gonna get an NX200. In fact, this could be very much a placeholder thing here. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what they would put in an NX200 in other markets. I don't even want to fathom how underpowered that would be. Uh, here in the United States, we'll get into all the powertrains that I'm expecting, NX250, 350H, 350, 450H+. Plus. We'll go over all that once we finish up with the video. And uh, let's go back. Let's look at the rear again right here. Uh, some, some extra vents on the rear. Don't know if that was necessary. And then you have the fake exhaust enclosures, which, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, really. And another look at it, as well as the additional vent. Looks good from the side. It looks a little bit longer. So finally the NX might have a little bit more usable space here in the back. So that's good to see. Okay, this is the first time we've seen this on maybe anything outside of the, is it the LS that has a fully digital display behind the steering wheel for the instrument cluster? So yeah, that's the first time we've seen that. Now it looks like the blinkers are their own lights and they have other indicators that they're, that they're own lights apart from the digital display, which is fine. Here we go. We have the interior look for the first time. This is a 14 inch touchscreen we've been hearing a lot about. It's a little bit taller than the 12 inch screen. So to me, it looks the same width that we've been getting in the 12 inch screens. It's just a little bit taller now. New trim. It almost looks like kind of like broken glass or some sort of 
I don't know, cracked desert dirt <laughs> with a black finish to it. It's very different. And it looks like we have some LED lighting here along the door panel. Again, it's not the greatest quality, so it's hard to tell. Uh, definitely new door handles, a uh, memory seats here on the driver's side. Doesn't look like we'll get memory seats on the passenger side. I'm assuming this is a top end spec because we have heads up display right here. We have the dual um, screens. I don't know if this 14 inch screen will be standard. I'm assuming this LCD behind the steering wheel will be standard. Now you might be saying, Kirk, um, where's the touchpad? Well, they've redesigned the touchpad. They actually haven't got rid of it in my my guessing. So let's wait for it to get a little bit closer here. So no touchpad, we have an EV mode. So that already <laughs> debunks that this vehicle is the same as the outside of the NX200 that we just got to walk around in theory. Um, because the NX200 is not a hybrid. So EV mode is only on the hybrid. So we're probably looking at the interior of the NX350H. It looks like you have driving modes here. Originally, I thought this was a start stop button, but that's up closer by the steering wheel at the top. So that is a driving mode. We have USB-C and a normal USB wireless charging here, and maybe a phone holder as well. And this looks more like the LS or the LC500 uh, with the shifting. So just shift by wire, nothing new for Lexus, but definitely new for the nx here now this screen is big guys look at what we have here this looks like a fully touch screen everything uh thank god we still have a volume knob but everything is touch sensitive and that includes your climate control which i'm, I'm okay with it because you'll get used to it and then you can always use the voice activation to tell the climate control what you want but you can see heated steering wheel two different settings there uh what I found interesting is you have by climate control that you can select, oh, well, if this person wants air on their face, you can have this person that wants air on their feet. So very different there. Start button is up here, glossy black plastic, which is whatever, it's a touch screen. It'll just look like it <laughs> when the screen is off, it's gonna collect fingerprints, but whatever. This looks like the cutout of the typical 12 inch screen that we have. So you can say, well, here's another inch for climate control and another inch for more climate control. We have LCDs in these climate control buttons kind of reminds me of uh, let's say the Mercedes out there and there are some Mercedes cues in here as we'll see on the steering wheel so on the steering wheel there's a lot less buttons it looks a lot less cluttered so what is going on well this is a pages button and we have a pages button here a uh, touchpad on the left and a touchpad on the right very Mercedes like so this touchpad on the right will control some things on this screen and the touchpad on the left will control everything here and this is just a menu button for this screen and this is a menu button for the left screen on the left this looks like engine temperature and then on the right this looks like fuel gauge these bars and then in the middle um, of course we have radar cruise control which this is something new for the first time if you look at the green that must mean that it's in more autonomy mode where it's going to you know steer you in your lane a little bit better uh, full radar cruise control with these bars now it looks like we might have more than three bars here on current lexus products you only have three radar cruise control settings uh, for distancing uh, looks like we have a digital speedometer here paddle shifters which i'm not sure again what paddle shifters are going to do on a hybrid they might mess with the braking a little bit regen braking okay so a couple more buttons that i see here right here is going to be your camera view button and this looks like a, an auto parking button so it, it might be able to park itself which we don't see in a whole lot of lexuses nowadays a better look at these wheels here now that we're closer up these well hold on hold on are these different wheels these are definitely not F-Sport wheels, but they look like this machine finish wheel looks different than the wheels we've been seeing earlier. Yeah, to me, this looks like more of an F-Sport wheel that they show on the unveil. And then we get closer on this image later on in the video that shows a different wheel. At least I think it's a different wheel. It might be the same, just be, could be the lighting making it look different. So a better look at the quad beams for the first time in a little bit uh, a little <laughs> with illumination there. And if you look closely here, we have the eyelashes that we have on the UX uh, without those daytime running lights. So that's carried over to this vehicle as well. At the end, Lexus confirms a couple things that we've been knowing, NX350H. And then we also have the nx 450h plus first plug-in hybrid we're going to speculate a little bit on what these powertrains are going to be coming soon again i don't know if this vi video was supposed to be leaked or what you know that's up for lexus to decide if if, if they just if this was a full-on leak or just a controlled leak you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's spreadsheet time get your snacks and drinks let's get into it 
So there are gonna be six powertrains for the NX. You're gonna have a front wheel drive and all wheel drive entry level NX250. Again, take this with a grain of salt, but I think I'm gonna be pretty close on this. So this is gonna be a naturally aspirated four cylinder that we see in a lot of Toyota and Lexus products. This is A25A FKS. Dynamic force engine, 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic transmission. Essentially the same thing as a RAV4, but this will keep uh, leasing options down um, and just be able to get people into the brand at a, at a really, really inexpensive price point. The NX350, and just like the 250, I don't know if every single market will be getting the 250 and 350. There might be markets that only get hybrids. So, but here in America, I'm, I'm assuming there's gonna be 250 and 350. This will be an all new turbocharged engine, 2.4 liter turbo is what's been rumored, around 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. Same eight-speed automatic transmission we see in the base model. Front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive 250, front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive 350. That's already four of the six powertrains. And then in the video that we just saw, there are two more, the NX350H and the 450H Plus. So let's talk about those. So this is what I'm hoping for in the NX350. They could go the cheap and lame route and just really just have the same powertrain as the Venza, which, and that would be the RAV4 hybrid as well, which comes out to 219 horsepower combined. But what, what I hope they do is they give the Lexus a little bit more electrification, a little bit more power, a little bit more treatment here uh, to sway buyers to go to this, this, you know, luxury brand, give us a little bit more power. We have this already option, this option already in the Highlander hybrid and the Sienna hybrid with 254 combined horsepower. So you're actually getting a little bit more horsepower uh, over the Venza from the naturally aspirated engine. And you have a larger electric motor up front, about 180 horsepower and about 200 uh, pound-feet of torque out of that electric motor on the front axle. Same motor on the rear axle as we get on the Venza as well as the RAV4 hybrid. So hopefully they give us a little bit more treatment on the NX350H. Uh, miles per gallon, I'm gonna assume somewhere around 40 miles per gallon. Now the 450H Plus, now they could go the cheap and lame route and just rebadge a RAV4 Prime and I think a lot of people would be okay with that. The problem is, is that it's the same powertrain as the RAV4 Prime. Lexus teased in December that they're working on some direct four setups where they have a lot more of a lot more torque and electrification towards the rear wheels. And so this is what I'm hoping for on the NX 450H Plus. Horsepower around 300, my estimations have it a little bit lower at 287, but again, not official by any means, but a whopping 430 pound-feet of torque for the whole system. And most of that torque, that added torque is coming from the rear wheels. So if we look compared to the RAV4 Prime here, we have 177 pound-feet of torque on the rear wheels compared to 89 pound-feet of torque and 107 horsepower on the rear wheels compared to the 54 max horsepower on the RAV4 Prime. Hopefully they give it to us like that. Even if peak horsepower is down a little bit, we get a lot more spirited driving from the rear thrust. Pause, might have to edit that. <laughs> Hopefully they give the NX some special treatment when it comes to electrification. I'm, I'm a little bit over Lexus doing things too conservatively, sharing everything with the Toyota in. They need to take that next step. They've already teased it, now give it to us. Give it to us in a more potent 350H over the Venza hybrid, and give it to us in a more potent plug-in hybrid, the 450H Plus over the RAV4 Prime. Whoa, I wasn't expecting this when I woke up this morning, but I'm sure glad it happened. It's stuff like this that just gets me so excited or you, know, you guys know I've been covering Lexus for a long time. That's really what this channel started over. Guys, I will see you in the comments. If you're excited for the upcoming NX, smash a like button. If you want to see more coverage on Japanese and Korean autos, definitely subscribe, smash a notification bell. Speaking of the RAV4 Prime, I'm getting one today for review. So I'll be able to give you guys my thoughts on potentially what could be the NX 450H Plus, but in Toyota, guys. But guys, I'll leave it there. See you in the comments. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and peace out.